Again, subscribe, like, and share, all that stuff. Have a nice day. Hello, Crafty Andy here, and these are my thoughts. The optimism behind nihilism. Nihilism is defined as there not being any meaning to anything. There are countless people who will not even consider nihilism and even balk at the idea of it. The majority of people I have met and known will cling to these ideas of everything happens for a reason. Karma, a force or God watches over us. I have been surprised by how many agnostics there are in this sense. These ideas of forces at work towards the greater good just points to the notion there is meaning to our existence involving both negative and positive events. More often than not, a lot of people will dwell on a tragedy with a superstitious mindset. Example, a baby gets eaten by a dingo and the mother screams, Why? Why, God, oh, why? Trying to find some greater purpose behind the event in a futile effort to give it meaning and purpose in the universe, while the true answer is simple. The dingo was hungry and wanted some baby helper. When I rejected my religious upbringing, I eventually saw the emptiness of a lot of ideas and traditions. No fate but what we make. There is no destiny for us, no certain path to follow in order to achieve greatness. Everything we have done, are doing, and might do ultimately has no meaning in the grand scheme of things. We are but a pale blue dot within a universe that wouldn't notice if our planet were to explode right now. Nothing we think or do matters and as quickly as we come to exist, we will just as quickly be forgotten. Even the most prolific influencers of history will eventually just exist in forgotten forms of media and lost in a sea of record keeping. Nothing could ever be as liberating as letting go of everything. As frustrated as I may get trying to get a sizable audience online, large enough that I may be able to be creative full time, I understand it may never happen. That's okay. It doesn't matter. Why don't I just give up? Why continue? Because it doesn't matter. It's also why I balance my work and social life involving my family. Regardless, nothing we do matters, so why not try? Why not keep moving forward? I understand the value and meaning to my work is all contained within my own head, and yet that to me makes it all the more worth pursuing. When I accepted my own bisexuality and I dated women and men declaring that whoever I fall in love with is who I will be with, it was the subtle art of not giving a fuck at work. Because it doesn't matter what the masses think about me in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't matter since I know myself a lot better than any stranger could. It doesn't matter what legislation may pass by the government that labels me less than, and since none of this matters, then I have nothing to lose when it comes to being my expressive self and fighting for the right to exist. Those who have wronged me in general, whatever pettiness that may be involved, I can just cut those people out of my life and proceed forward because it doesn't matter. Only a very bitter, cold, and unfulfilled person would seek purpose behind the downfall and mocking of shortcomings from another human being. Like this clip from Married with Children, between Al Bundy and a librarian who watched him grow up. She's in the middle of retiring. Today, when I get in my car and leave this place for the last time, I will be whole. Your shame is my gold watch. So you think I'm a loser? Just because I have a stinking job that I hate? A family that doesn't respect me? A whole city that curses the day I was born? Well, that may mean loser to you, but let me tell you something. Every morning when I wake up, I know it's not going to get any better until I go back to sleep again. So I get up, have my watered down tang and still frozen Pop-Tart, get in my car with no upholstery, no gas, and six more payments to fight traffic just for the privilege of putting cheap shoes on the cloven hooves of people like you. I'll never play football like I thought I would. I'll never know the touch of a beautiful woman. And I'll never again know the joy of driving without a bag on my head. But I'm not a loser. Because despite it all, me and every other guy who will never be what he wanted to be are still out there being what we don't want to be 40 hours a week for life. And the fact that I haven't put a gun in my mouth, you pudding of a woman, <laughs> makes me a winner. It took me a little bit of thinking to come to terms with what was going on here. 
This librarian saw Al Bundy grow up all his life and was declaring her satisfaction in retirement knowing that Al grew up to be a loser as she predicted. At first it came off as complacency, that despite all the shortcomings he doesn't bother with trying anything else and just decided to give up and let the current take him. Really though, it's the opposite of that. It's his declaration that despite all the shortcomings in his life, involving factors both within and outside of his control, he doesn't give up. Al represents the majority of human beings on this planet, who may at one point hope to be the next Bill Gates, Beyonce, Marilyn Manson, Trent Reznor, but fall short of those goals with a lot of it having to do with dumb luck. How many bands are there that will never reach the level of Metallica? How many entrepreneurs will never reach the level of Bill Gates or Steve Jobs? It's one thing that seems to be lost among a lot of people who are suffering from depression as depression goes up. It's that there's nothing wrong with being ordinary. You don't strive for mediocrity, but you also don't dwell in despair if you land in it. We've lost track of what normal good human experience is actually like. First of all, most of us are going to be ordinary at the vast majority of things that we do. Second of all, even if you are able to lift a thousand pounds off the ground or whatever, that doesn't necessarily make you a good father or a good friend or, or even a good person. I have to do some self-reflecting here. What did I want? What do I want? And what I want in the future? I want to be a good artist. I want to tell stories with my works and share my experiences with the world that has beaten me down and tried to keep me in a quiet place. What do I have? Well, despite my efforts, I don't have the creative empire I dreamed of, but I do have a place to express my thoughts and ideas. The value of my own works was never dependent on the amount of people that see it, but more regarding my own personal taste. Creation for creation's sake. It doesn't matter if I score millions of sales regarding my art prints and future books. It matters to me that I do it and try my best to play the market and garner attention no matter how hopeless it may look to outsiders and quitters. What I want for the future is to let out my song before I die. To promote the visions I believe will better humankind in the long run. People as a whole letting go of their dogmatic beliefs is a good start. Not just God or religion, but all variations of it. Traditions, heritage culture, gender, race, the weight of importance put upon these words needs to die. It never mattered where you came from or where I came from, before now and especially after. It's the next step of growing as a species and it brings a realization of just how absolute and complete the ending of one's life really is. Enjoy your time here while you can. May your existence be carried on through your positive deeds, because this is all there ever will be for you and I. However, these are just my thoughts. Subscribe, like, comment suggestions for artwork or topics to cover. I do Twitch streams Monday through Friday at 5 p.m., Sunday at 8 p.m. It involves video editing, art making, and gaming as well. I do have prints for sale at the Art Pal store under Craft E&E, as well as a Patreon if you want to support the show that way as well. Again, subscribe, like, and share, all that stuff. Have a nice day.